Christ is risen. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Please kneel. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind and Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat and sleep with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, 
step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me up from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it, had, as it had upon us in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And then they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now continue with the portion of Psalm 148 found in your bulletin. We will read it responsively by whole verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all the Praise him all the Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord. All deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted, his splendor is over earth and heaven. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to John. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. But this everyone will know, that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During this reading of the hymn, all children in attendance are invited to meet me at the steps, and we will make our way to Children's Chapel in the Chantry. speak to you in the name of the true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. From the book of Acts, but a second time the voice answered Peter from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. One day last month, I agreed to help my wife, Stacy at the grocery store. Mind you now, my help consists of carrying things home, not making any critical decisions about what the family will eat. So in the produce department of Whole Foods, Stacy instructed me to stay in one place with the cart and not touch anything. 
Meanwhile, she would run around with the list, pull things from the shelves and bring them back to the cart. It just goes faster that way in the crowded store. So standing there with time on my hands, I noticed a man by the avocado display. Strangely, he would pick up one avocado, then put it down again. The same avocado over and over again. At one point, he put the avocado in his cart and wheeled away, only to return and put it back again. Then he picked it up and put it down again and again. Having worked in mental health years ago, my guess was that the man suffers from severe obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. OCD is an anxiety ailment in which people find themselves obsessed by thoughts that something terrible is going to happen. The notion may be a vague sense of dread or a specific premonition of certain doom. Either way, people with OCD live in fear that they themselves will unwittingly unleash a chain reaction of events that will result in their worst nightmare coming to pass. If they are thinking the negative thought as they walk through a door or switch off a light or pick up an avocado, their compulsion is to go back and do it over again. It doesn't matter how many times it takes, they can't move on until they complete the task without the thought. Obviously, a high degree of magical thinking is involved that ascribes cosmic significance to the most ordinary of daily actions. Last month in Whole Foods, I inwardly grieved for the man caught in a competitive, a repetitive ritual in the produce department. He might have remained there for hours, for all I knew. In today's reading from the book of Acts, we hear the apostle Peter tell the story of how the Spirit of God freed him from a particular place of immobility. Peter is perhaps the best known of the disciples who walked with Jesus during his earthly ministry. Throughout the Gospels, we see that Peter was impulsive, opinionated, and fiercely loyal. He was a fisherman when Jesus first called him to follow, so I've always imagined Peter to be more of a rugged outdoorsman than someone concerned with keeping his fingernails clean. Nevertheless, Peter was an observant Jew who abided by the law of Moses as his people interpreted it at the time. Apparently, he was quite fastidious in his keeping of the law's finer points. Certain foods and people were unclean. Then, as now, Jews were not to eat pork, shellfish, or insects. They were not to mix meat and dairy. Concerning unclean people, certain types of sinners always qualified, but at the top of every list would be Gentiles, any non-Jew. Could a Gentile share in the promises that God had made to Israel? Many scholarly conservative Jews at the time thought that it was highly unlikely. Therefore, it was simply best to avoid the Gentiles as much as possible, or you could be unclean yourself and risk God's displeasure. What is more, since you could never entirely be sure you hadn't slipped up, the practice of regu regular ritual purification was the smart way to stave off divine wrath. The book of Acts, as you likely know, tells the story of the early church in the years immediately following the resurrection. The Christian movement, or the way, as it was called, was straining to expand beyond its origins. 
Would the Christ followers be merely a small local sect of Judaism in Jerusalem, or would they be the way God reached out to the known world throughout the Mediterranean? Certain individuals would be key. Saul of Tarsus, whom we heard about a few weeks ago, was one of them. Paul, uh, Peter was another. If Peter remained stuck where he was as a slave to the local rules and rituals of a particular people, the spread of the gospel would be hindered. But if Peter could be loosed from specific attitudes that confined him, then the Spirit of God would be able to work powerfully through him to reach the Gentile world with the good news of Jesus. Today we've heard the story of Peter's vision as he prayed in the city of Joppa. He saw something descending from heaven like a great sheet let down by four corners. Inside he saw animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and creepy crawly things of every kind. Essentially inside the sheet was everything Jews were not supposed to eat. But Peter heard a voice commanding him to do just that. Peter protested, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice of the Lord declared, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. The book of Acts tells two versions of the same incident. The other account, just b earlier than this one, reveals that Peter was perplexed by the meaning of the vision. But eventually he realized that God was releasing him from the narrow definitions of what was clean. God was erasing the distinction between clean and unclean. Thus, Peter could move on in the mission to the Gentiles, specifically to the house of a man named Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile, a soldier in the Roman army. God's desire was that he too should share in the promises of Israel. Move on, Peter. Go to Cornelius. Dine with the Gentiles. The new command of the Lord was entirely consistent with what Peter had heard from Jesus at the Last Supper. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so also you should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What God cares about is that we love one another. What God does not care about are religious dietary regulations, head coverings, vestments, what color is your academic hood, ritual washings of cups, kettles, pots, and pans, whether you say Alleluia in the season of Lent or not. God doesn't care about these things. God cares about whether we love one another. The notion that we can control the mind and mystery and majesty of God with our rituals is magical thinking. I will stop short of using the term mental illness, but we are pushing up against it. Move on. You are free. You are released. Take the avocado and go. Dine with the Gentiles, Peter. Let them serve you a bacon cheeseburger. Eat it and tell them about Jesus. The new freedom in Christ sounds like a powerfully attractive offer, doesn't it? In the same way, St. Paul would later write to the Galatians that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Even still, as much as we might agree intellectually with the way God sees the human family, we have a tough time 
embracing it and moving on. Distinctions of race, religion, class, and sexuality sharply divide us. Why do we get stuck in the old way? We get stuck for all sorts of reasons. The old way is what we know. It's the status quo, simply the way things are. Fear and anxiety play a part, as does a certain degree of magical thinking, that our own rituals have the power to unlock the blessings of God. We continue, therefore, making much of distinctions that cannot matter much to God. Jew and Greek, slave and free, male and female. Or how about this one? Try this one on, Episcopalian and Baptist. During Holy Week, I was attending a service at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. As you may know, the cathedral is the largest in the world, even though it's only two-thirds complete. It's 600 feet long. You could fit Grace Church essentially in the choir stalls of the cathedral. I was, but it's only two-thirds complete. The center of it is, is not. I was sitting there looking at the rough, unfinished, and dare I say, unattractive portions of the unfinished sections. And I imagined that if I had a billion dollars to spare, I'd be tempted to get the job done. Apparently, a century ago, the diocese did indeed have such an offer. In the 1920s, John D. Rockefeller Jr., the steel and rail railroad magnate, approached the Bishop of New York at the time, William Thomas Manning. Rockefeller said that he would provide all the funds to complete the construction of what was being billed as a house of prayer for all people. All Rockefeller wanted in return was to be made a trustee of the cathedral. Bishop Manning declined. Why? Because Rockefeller was a Baptist. Manning didn't think it was appropriate for a Baptist to be a trustee of the Episcopal Cathedral. So Rockefeller moved on to build and finish Riverside Church, while St. John the Divine remains incomplete probably forever. In defense of Bishop Manning, my guess is that he was concerned about identity. St. John the Divine was to be the Episcopal Cathedral, administered by Episcopalians. It was to be built of pure stone, not a mixture of stone and Rockefeller's steel. Likewise, the Jews were concerned about identity. They were fearful that if they did not maintain the rituals that set them apart as a people, they would simply be absorbed into the great ocean of humanity. The tension that people, Peter experienced when trying to process the meaning of his vision is one that is known to every people in every place and time. It's the tension between identity and relevance. On the one hand, we can choose to guard our identity so jealously that we become irrelevant, a curiosity to some and an annoyance to others. On the other hand, we can try so hard to be relevant to an ever-changing world that we lose the anchor we have in our identity. We become indistinguishable from the world we are trying to reach or even challenge and therefore have nothing unique to say. As the spirit of the living God impels us forward, our challenge is always to walk the fine line between identity and relevance. Tradition and ritual can be deadly if we think that somehow, magically, their practice controls God. But tradition and ritual can be life-giving if they remind us of who and whose we are, and if we practice them to give thanks for the love of God. Last month, the celebrations of Passover and Easter coincided. Our Jewish brothers and sisters 
did what they did, not to stave off the anger of God, but to give thanks for the love of God that brought them out of Egypt and into the promised land. Likewise, we Christians gathered here on Easter Day, not because God required it, not because God would be angry if we didn't. No, what we did on Easter Day and do every Sunday is to give thanks for the love of God that raised Jesus from the dead and brought the whole creation out of death into life. Hopefully, you're here today, kneeling, standing, sitting, praying, not because you have to be here, but because you want to be here. When I was growing up, every evening, my mother prepared a hearty meal for the family to enjoy. I remember lots of shake and bake chicken, cheese whiz macaroni, tuna casseroles, and jello molds. I also remember that during one period of time, she decided that Thursday nights would be different. We would eat in the dining room, not the kitchen. My mother would make a gourmet meal. She would shop for the ingredients. She would bring me along to carry things home. And if I didn't touch things in the store, I might get a lollipop for the walk home. We would use on Thursday evenings the fine china and light candles. My father would stack LPs of Mozart and Beethoven on the stereo. It had to be Mozart and Beethoven. We did not know why, we did not ask why. That is the way it had to be. The Thursday dinners were extra work for everyone, especially the washing of cups and kettles and pots and pans and the cleaning up at the end of it. But we did those things not because we had to do them, rather because we wanted to do them. I have incredibly fond memories of those Thursday nights. To this day, I give thanks for the conversations we had, the bonds we established, and the intangible good we accomplished through the ritual of treating each other as if we were honored guests. Sometimes, a gourmet meal is what it takes to call everyone to a higher level, even into the closer presence of God. At other times, guacamole and chips will do. In all things, remember, what God cares about is that we love one another. What God has made clean, we must not call profane. Amen. We'll stand now and affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed on page 53 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and do thy ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. Let thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leadeth to eternal life. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we ask your blessing on Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Andrew, Allen, and Mary, bishops in New York, and for all bishops and other ministers. We ask your blessing on Joseph, our president, Kathleen, our governor, and Eric, our mayor. We ask your blessing also for those in special need, Layla Fawcett, Michael Miliarano, Kathy Gelb, Linda Russo, Karen Scramlin, and any others we name, either silently or aloud. For justice, peace, and freedom in this and every place, especially in Ukraine and all the troubled regions of the world, for the victims of natural disasters around the globe, for all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, and for all victims of war, for any others, any other concerns we name, either silently or aloud. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially William R. Mil Miller, John E. Reber, and any others we name, either silently or aloud. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially the particular blessings that the people of Grace Church have named, for the love and support of my parents, for John Crocker III, for the COVID vaccines, for the, the ability to get together again with vaccinated friends and any other blessings we name either silently or aloud. Let us all say together the general thanksgiving as you'll find it in your bulletins. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service 
and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who had has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Would you be seated, please? I want to welcome all of you to Grace Church this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to say a special word of welcome to those who are visiting with us today. If this is your first time here, very happy that you found your way among us and uh, perhaps you'd like to fill out one of the newcomer cards you'll find in the pews just by the, by the books underneath the bookshelves or, or the prayer books and hymnals and you can leave that in the offering plate as it comes by. Uh, and if you're, uh, we welcome those who are joining us online. If you're with us on the live stream today, very happy that you've tuned in and are, are here uh, through, the, through the live stream ministry. And uh, you can go to the homepage of the website and click I'm new here and uh, fill out the form and we can be in touch with you then uh, as well and tell you more about the Grace Church family. For those who are here in person, we have uh, a, a time of fellowship afterwards, uh, coffee and, and baked goods in Tuttle Hall through this door and to your left, and uh, some lovely offerings baked by parishioners are there, so I encourage you to come back and enjoy uh, some of that. Uh, Julia, send, our associate rector, sends her, her greetings. She is off doing a family wedding uh, this weekend and will be back uh, next weekend. Welcome to the choir stalls of our wonderful junior choristers. Uh, this is a junior chorister Sunday and great job so far. Can't wait to hear the offertory anthem as well and thanks for your ministry of music. There is, um, in, in your bulletin, there are, are a number of activities, opportunities for spiritual growth and worship and service that are taking place and so I will commend the bulletin to your perusal and participation as you're able so take it with you and join in and let us re now remember the words of our Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive
Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Charlie? Nice. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.